Hey everyone, it's Lizzie and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to share step by step how I track and set up our paycheck budget. I utilize a budget planner, which is this one from the Elevated Life Co. I have cash envelopes and I have other apps too specifically and I will be showing you the process. So this will be uh, in-depth video so if you want to skip to certain parts I'll try to make sure to timestamp the cash stuffing portion if you just want to skip to that that way you can watch it but for those that have asked me time and time again how to use the balance my checkbook app and the simple budget envelope app which is what I use to track my sinking funds and my daily variable cash envelopes. I hope this video helps. So let's just start right on into it and so I can explain this particular paycheck budget. So the very first thing that I do is figure out what is our available balance. And I'll get to this once I share the Balance My Checkbook app, but this is not the balance that's in the bank account. This is the balance that I have not spent for a specific category so for example in your bank account your balance includes money that you have allocated for a specific bill or you know upcoming expense this is where I use my bill tracker so in my bill tracker I break things down paycheck to paycheck so that way it can cover a specific bill so the bank balance that you have you shouldn't take into account that number when it comes to the balance available section in your income. This is like gas money that you didn't spend if you use your debit card when you uh, purchase gas. So for example, last week I set aside $70 specifically for gas um, and I also leave a little bit of a cushion which is usually $100. So my available balance when I broke down the budget last week was $170 because I've allocated this column right here for bills. So that money is in my bank account balance. However, I don't wanna touch that as my available because it's already been given an assignment and I don't want to dip into that because it will affect me in the future to pay that bill, okay? So I hope that I explained that correctly. Um, so right now, um, looking at my Simple Budget Envelope app, this is what I have left as of the end of the pay period. So these two are in my cash envelope, but this blue one is the only one that I track from my bank account. So I have spent $50, because remember I budgeted 70 for gas, and this leaves me with $20 in the bank that I still have yet to spend from my gas category along with my remaining checking account cushion, the buffer that I kept in there. So you factor that number in, along with your paycheck, whatever you received as a direct deposit in your bank account. After that, I do tithe off of my paycheck. This is a personal belief. I am not going to debate anyone of whether you believe it is right or not. This is what we believe in our household. We've been doing it faithfully and that is what it is. <laughs> so if you don't agree, you can keep your comments to yourself. Anyways, we tied 10% of our paycheck and this leaves us with $1,031.29 left to break down into bills, variable spending, savings, and all of that. So now is where I go into the bill tracker. The bill tracker, as I mentioned, I break things down by paycheck. So I have a whole video dedicated to the bill tracker and how to break it up and set it up yourself. I'll make sure to link it. I've done a couple of the videos explaining, so if you have any other questions, please let me know. But I've already figured out what I'm going to set aside from the November 10th pay. There is one, however, this $633 rent payment that I am paying out of our savings account because if you didn't hear, we are moving and rent is now going to be going up, but because we're in that moving transition period, we've paid rent twice for our current place and then moving into the new place to get the keys. So it's kind of an expensive month right now um, and that's why savings 
is so important because uh, you can utilize that in order to cover expenses. And so that's what we had to do um, in order not to put something like pull from a credit card or whatnot. It's not the ideal situation. However, I'm very grateful that we had savings in place to cover these bills. So what I'm gonna focus on is the December rent. We are setting aside $338. And then once I do that, I check it off. As you I already paid the current month for the new rent. Disney Pass, we are putting $13 aside. State Farm is getting $16.03. MediShare is getting $79. And then Counseling is getting $63.75. So once I've done that, I go ahead and I just check off that I know we've allocated for these specific bills for this paycheck, and so we're good there. So we have our fixed expenses covered. This is the most important aspect. You wanna make sure that you pay your bills on time. And so I like breaking it down this way. Next for gas, we always set aside $70 each week. Again, this is only for a week period because we get paid weekly over here. My husband gets paid weekly, I get paid bi-weekly. So there's always income coming in every Friday. Just keep that in mind. So for our weekly gas, we have been managing $70 and that's been working really well for us. So we're just gonna keep it at that. Grocery is getting 85. And our other category, which is miscellaneous, is getting 25. Then our buffer is getting $100 because that's been working really well for us. Let me go ahead and add up our expenses categories and I'm gonna fill in the rest on a reel. <laughs> so you're not gonna see me fill in the totals here, but if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see the numbers and it's just so satisfying. So I have my calculator and let's just go ahead and add up the fixed expenses and the variable expenses. So the total expenses from this paycheck comes to $789.78. So we have our income and we're gonna subtract what our um, expenses total comes to. So we have $241.51 left. And then this is what we do. We base it on priority. So right now our priority is moving. <laughs> So there's gonna be a good chunk that is gonna be allocated specifically for our home fund. And yes, our home fund was um, and is for saving for our next home. But right now, because we have to wait for like another years of tax returns, things kind of changed a little, but that's okay. We can still work towards that goal again um, to save for the down payment, but right now we have to save for moving expenses. So for our home, we are gonna put $160.51. Mint Mobile, Mint Mobile is the phone provider that we're on a trial basis. So I don't know if you've seen those commercials from Ryan Reynolds, but it's an affordable phone plan where you, kind of like a prepay, you pay for specific um, gigabytes if it's unlimited, uh, 15 gigs, but it's really, really affordable and it uses the T-Mobile network. I haven't really had a problem with that. I get service everywhere that I go to, which has been fantastic. My husband, on the other hand, he's been, he's a little sketchy to really commit to Mint Mobile. So we're gonna test it out for another three months. And so um, we've been saving little by little so that way we can go ahead and pay for like a certain amount of time for having Mint Mobile. Yeah, that's kind of the gist. And I'm sorry if you hear that wind. You guys, uh, I live in Florida and there is a hurricane. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's been kind of a crazy season over here, but we're okay. We're more inland, so we're, we're very thankful that we haven't had much uh, damages or flooding or anything where we live. So just pray for, pray for this world. It's just a crazy, crazy world. So Mint Mobile, we're gonna put $48. Gifts slash holidays, we're gonna allocate 13. 
And then our savings challenge, I base it off of what we have not spent from our gas. So this is money that we didn't spend um, from the bank account and that was the $20. Remember we budgeted 70, we only spent 50. So now we have $20 and that is what we are withdrawing. So that way we can stuff our savings challenge box, which I'm super excited about. So this should equal that 241, leaving us at a zero based budget. 241.51. So the income minus the expenses and the savings equal zero. And that's exactly where you want to be. But now what do you do? You know, you spent all of the time to break this down. Now, what is it that you do? I'm first going to show you the Balance My Checkbook app. Meant for an iPhone, so that's why the sizing is a little smaller for my iPad. So I apologize but I'm gonna show you how you utilize this and I'll try to zoom it in so you guys can see. So this is what the Balance My Checkbook looks like. You first set it up. There's a free version. You don't need to add the multiple bank accounts because then you pay. So yeah, you shouldn't have to pay for this unless they changed it. Like if you're gonna download the app, maybe you'll have to pay like $2, but using the app itself and it'll look like this and you're gonna hit this plus button. Now you're gonna name your account and. It could just be like main, I don't know. Whatever you decide, oop, I'm sorry. Starting balance. So the starting balance will be your bank account balance. I'm going to do it based off of this number just so you can see how I break things down, but you'll want to use it based on what's truly in your bank account. And then you'll you know, put your numbers where they need to go as far as your bills. But I'm gonna do it this, that way you can kind of get the idea. So $1,031.29 is what I have in the bank. So that's my starting, okay? Once you click into it, so you see this is tracking what I have as far as the accounts. You can always add account, but I believe you have to pay having multiple accounts. So we're just gonna do it the free version. So as you can see right up here, it tells you what is your current balance and what is your available balance? On this app, your current balance should always equal what is in your bank account, all right? So right now we have $1,031.29 in our bank account, but we wanna take these numbers and put it in here so that way I know what is my available balance. That's where we got that number right here for the income. I base it off of the available balance, all right? So we're gonna hit the plus button and we're gonna tell our money where it's gonna go for our bills. So once we wrote it down here, I go ahead and I put it directly in my Balance My Checkbook app. So for rent, I'm gonna put rent as the name of the transaction and the, oops, and the dollar amount is gonna be the 338. So 338, we've set it aside and as you can see, we have our bank balance and then we have our available balance. So we know not to spend that $338 from our account. We're gonna do the same thing for this Disney Pass. So I'm gonna put Disney Pass as the transaction name and I'm gonna put $13. And again, you can say we are debiting, so we're withdrawing it from our balance, or you can say that you're depositing. So if you ever deposit anything in your bank account, you'll go ahead and click that credit and put in what you're depositing in the bank. So then you hit that and you hit done. So we've done Disney Pass, and I'm just gonna continue on and doing this down this line here for the expenses. All right, perfect. So we have our fixed expenses set aside, and it tells us what we have available is $521.51. That includes our variable spending and then also our savings. So once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and withdraw the cash that we said that we want to allocate for. So I withdraw cash for my grocery envelope, my other, you all know that I do the one cash envelope system. I withdraw for my cash sinking funds binder. So the cash that we are withdrawing today is the $85, the other, which is 25. We're withdrawing the mint mobile, the gifts, and our savings challenge. So $191 is this cash right here that we had taken out. So I've already withdrawn that from the bank. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna mark it as cash envelopes. We withdrew it, $191. And now it's saying that our bank balance 
is $1,031.29 and our available is $330.51. However, we've already withdrew that cash, so it needs to reflect in what our bank balance is. This is why I love this app. So we withdrew $191. That should be cleared. And when you clear something, when it went through your bank account, all you have to do is just click that blue circle and it gets a check mark and it reflects in your bank balance okay so whenever a bill actually clears your bank account all you have to do is just tap that and it checks it off and it will adjust your current balance and again that number is in your bank account if this makes sense to you thus far let me know okay but there's one more thing that we haven't accounted for and that is this home fund i do not withdraw this in cash i transfer into our savings account so i'm going to go ahead and add a transaction and I'm gonna label it home fund. It's a withdrawal out of this account, $160.51, and we're hitting done. So now as you can see, I will go ahead and make the transfer into my savings account. Once I do that, I haven't done it yet, but once I do, I'll go ahead and I'll click this and it's gonna adjust, adjust my bank balance. But right now I haven't yet done that, so I can't check it off. But now you see this number down here, the available balance, is $170. As you know, I only use my debit card or credit card for the gas. That is the $70. I haven't gotten gas yet, so I do have that still available to spend. And the $100 is that buffer. So the next week when I break down my budget, if I were to spend for gas $50, like I did this time, for example, I will then have the 120 and I would know $100 is for my checking account and $20 will be for my savings challenge. So then I use that 120 and I include that as part of the income breakdown as the available balance. This is how I manage and track what comes in and out of my checking account when I receive deposits and all of that. When my bills come out, I go ahead and I just check it off. The next app I use is a simple budget envelope app and now is where I'm going to get to stuffing the cash envelope. So first things first, we have to go ahead and put in for the bills. So I do the bills first, which is everything in the red and I mark in like what the total due is on the envelope and now we get to funding our digital envelopes. 338 is what we are stuffing into our rent envelope internet we haven't gotten a bill just yet so i'm not stuffing that right now disney pass it's getting 13. car insurance 1603 and as you can see because on the title of this envelope i put in the total amount due for that bill so i know i'm that envelope is fully funded so it's ready it gets auto debited from my bank account and I'm gonna go ahead and pay that once it gets taken out. MediShare is getting 79 and then counseling is getting 63.75. If you find this helpful, me walking like in depth real time uh, for how I manage and track, let me know. I just find it to be helpful to actually see the process of how somebody does their budgeting where they come up with the numbers. So if it is helpful to you, then give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. So then the next thing that I'm gonna do is the savings, which is all in purple. You can color code these however you wish and label them. It's really nice. Um, I have this on my phone, but I'm filming on my phone, so I can't show you. <laughs> uh, but it's nice to have it on the iPad as well. It doesn't sync though. So whatever changes I make here, it's not gonna show up on my phone. That's the only downside. All right, so Mint Mobile, I am adding $48. So once I get to stuffing, Mint Mobile will then have $192. Gifts and Holidays is the next one. We're adding $13. So it will then have 40. And then the Savings Challenge, I don't track on here, but that is getting $20. Next, we are stuffing our 
stuffing, <laughs> we're transferring to our home fund, which I have that down here in green. And these are the accounts I keep online in a savings account. So 160.51 is being added to home fund. That account will then have $761.52. So all of that is done. It's just the variable ones that I haven't yet stuffed because we have to go ahead and get my wallet. So let's go ahead and do that. We have everything that we are going to be using. This is my wallet and I normally have my one cash envelope, you guys, but I wanted to just use one item, which is my wallet to keep my money. And so I have, I've had these dividers for a while. You've seen them, but it's labeled grocery and miscellaneous, which is technically other, you know? So I figured as I do my tracking on here, I don't have to write it on the envelope as well since I do all my tracking on the app anyway. So I figured I'd cut one step, but this is technically like my one cash envelope process. It's just like this though. So it's in the dividers. So there's that and then my giving, I don't have anything and so we're good there. I had already taken out the change from the wallet, so that's all the change. So let's see what we have. We have five, six, seven, eight, oops, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, plus the change for groceries. And other has twenty, one, two, three, four, twenty-five. So I have a dollar more, which I guess it's okay. <laughs> More is always better. So this is the remaining money that I have and that is accurate. So I, since the goal is that we want to save for the move, we move in just a few days, I'm just gonna keep this aside and we're gonna stuff our um, 50 envelope challenge with this. So I'm just gonna take this aside and that's awesome, you guys, I can't believe that we've saved that much. So I'm just gonna mark this that we're saving so we're unstuffing the other and the grocery. So we're saving that. And we've already withdrawn the $20 from our bank for gas to save. So right now, these envelopes are empty, but we're gonna go ahead and stuff the $85 for grocery, the $25 for other, and the $70 for our gas. So now this is all set and up to date. So I can put that aside as well. So let's get to stuffing our grocery, which is getting the 85, 50, 70, 80, and five. The 85, miscellaneous is getting the 25. So this is still that one cash envelope system, but since I just carry my little wallet with me and my crossbody bag, this just makes more sense, truthfully. So that is good to go. Now let's go ahead and stuff our sinking funds that we are stuffing, which is only a few. First one is the Mint Mobile, which Mint Mobile is getting 48 dollars so mint mobile should have based on my simple budget envelope 192 20 40 60 81 20 40 60 70 75 80 85 86 87 88 89 90 1 and 2 so that is correct this is totally different now um, since we're not gonna focus on getting like a full year of the Mint Mobile. But each of these little icons represents $16 funded. So let's just see 192 divided by 16. So there should be 12 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's do 10, 11, and 12. So this is good next one is gifts so i didn't update this so gifts we're adding 13 dollars this should have 40 dollars after stuffing the 13 
which is 10, 11, 12, 13, 20, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 39, and 40. So that is perfect. And that is it for our sinking funds binder. As you can see, we have this money left over along with this right here. So I'm super, super excited about that. Again, it's small progress, but progress is still progress. So the envelopes that we'll be stuffing, let's see, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're going to take out a ten dollar for this one. Oh, that's already been stuffed. We'll move on to the back for that. So there's another ten. We have twenty, one, two, three, four, twenty-five. Okay, let's find a twenty-five for this one. And then a twenty has already been stuffed for the first set. So we'll take it out of the second set. Right there. So three envelopes we're able to stuff just from the money that we didn't spend, which is, it's amazing just to see. And I hope that me sharing this just inspires you guys to, you know, get on a written budget, but do it, like do it simply. I'm all about simple. I don't want to overcomplicate things. And I, this just, this right here just motivates me. And we will be using the money saved just because our move is coming up really really quickly it's like right around the corner um, so any of the money that we're saving here we'll most likely take out we'll see because we've been saving a lot so we'll see if we're if we have to tap into this we will like this is the first thing that will go <laughs> if we that will that we will use if we have to but so far we were able to save from this there's 20, 45, $55 plus what we transferred to our home savings. And then the change, all of that takes into account. So it's small progress, but it's still progress, you guys. And it's worth celebrating. And I hope that you guys found inspiration from this and, you know, learned something as far as the way that I do the budgeting. Everyone does things differently. This is just what makes sense to me and kind of how my brain works. I don't know. <laughs> I just... I love tracking and organizing, but doing it in an easy way so you don't have to do too many steps. It's just kind of straight to the point. If you have any uh, suggestions for other people, this is a safe place to be. So leave it in the comments down below. And if you got something out of it, I, I hope one person did um, at least a different form of budgeting that you got something out of it, you know, and uh, yeah, that is everything for today's video. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys right here in a brand new one. Bye guys.